two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the space shuttle Discovery. The European Space Agency's Columbus Laboratory is scheduled for launch to the International Space Station, the ISS, in December 2007. Over the coming years, Columbus will enable hundreds of pioneering experiments to be conducted in the weightlessness of space. The laboratory is named in honor of a famous Italian navigator and explorer, Christopher Columbus. In 1492, Columbus set out on a voyage into the unknown. His mission was to find a new trade route to China and India. Instead, he discovered the Americas, a continent that wasn't supposed to be there. The Columbus module is a large, pressurized aluminum cylinder, about four and a half meters wide and almost seven meters long, the size of a double-decker bus. Its side walls house eight research racks with another two in the ceiling. Each of these contains its own power, cooling, video and data links that feed information back to researchers and control centers on the Earth. The Space Shuttle Atlantis will soar into orbit with the fully equipped lab anchored in its payload bay. Two days after liftoff from Florida, it will dock with the station 400 kilometers above the Earth. Astronauts will then use the station's robotic arm to attach Columbus to a connecting module known as Node 2. Columbus will be used to carry out research in many different disciplines, including biology, biotechnology, fluid and material science, medicine and human physiology. Technology demonstration and educational activities will also be performed inside Columbus. The key factor in this unique research is the microgravity environment, where gravity seems to disappear and everything becomes weightless. Gravity is an attractive force exerted by all objects. The more massive an object is, the stronger its gravitational attraction. This is why an apple falls towards the center of the Earth and not the other way around. On Earth, everything we do is influenced by gravity. We're so accustomed to gravity that we take it for granted. We expect something that is dropped to fall to the ground, and we expect to walk everywhere rather than float. The faster a bullet leaves a gun, the further it travels before falling to the ground. In the same way, a spacecraft must reach a certain speed if it is to enter orbit. At an altitude of 400 kilometers, the ISS has an orbital speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour. Any slower and it will fall rapidly towards the Earth. Any faster and it will move further away. So spacecraft and people in orbit are still subject to gravity. Although they are falling towards the Earth, their high orbital speed means that the amount they fall is equal to the curvature of the Earth. The result of this free fall is apparent weightlessness. Columbus is designed to take advantage of this unique weightlessness environment where gravitational forces are one million times weaker than on the ground. Underlying processes that are otherwise obscured by gravity effects will be revered by experiments performed on Columbus. The research racks on board Columbus are designed to investigate how materials, biological specimens and people are influenced by an apparent absence of gravity. The European Physiology Modules facility will investigate how weightlessness affects the human body. The Fluid Science Laboratory will study the behavior of fluids and gases. Biolab will study microorganisms, cells and small plants. The Material Science Laboratory will study the properties of different materials such as metals and alloys. The European Drawer Rack will house a variety of small experiments. Life Sciences is one of the most fascinating areas of microgravity research. One of the most interesting problems to be investigated is the loss of bone cells by astronauts. With no noticeable gravity to fight against, weight-bearing bones lose between 1 and 2 percent of their mass each month. In weightlessness, plants tend to grow taller than usual and their stalks and roots grow at unusual angles. Botanists want to learn more about how plants sense gravity and why they struggle to reproduce. Fluids also behave differently in space. On Earth, gases and liquids heated on a cooker rise due to convection. In space, 
Warm fluids do not rise and cooler fluids do not sink. Gravity affects the way fluids mix. On Earth, it is difficult to sustain a mixture of oil and water. After a while, the water is at the bottom and the oil is on top. In weightlessness, globules of oil float in the water. Combustion is also very different in orbit. On Earth, a flame has a pointed shape because hot gases rise and cooler air is drawn in at the base. In the absence of gravitational forces, nothing rises. The process of burning changes so that flames are much smaller and spherical in shape. On Columbus, scientists will investigate how fluids behave without effects such as sedimentation, convection, and fluid static pressure. Other experiments will be performed outside Columbus. Some of these will be used to study the Earth or expose materials to the harsh radiation and temperature environment. Observations of the Earth and outer space will take advantage of the station's location above the atmosphere. There is no doubt that Christopher Columbus would be amazed to observe the high-tech laboratory that is named after him. Just as his discovery of the Americas opened up two continents to European explorers, so the 21st century Columbus Laboratory will offer a multitude of possibilities for scientific discovery in the wonderful world of weightlessness.